This is the story of Theranos, a story of fraud and manipulation. Today, we will see how it started and how it ended. We're talking about Theranos. Latest on Elizabeth Holmes, the Theranos founder was convicted of defrauding investors into her blood testing startup. Is pleading for leniency before she's sentenced for fraud. You would think that a scam of this proportion would be made by a 50 year old dude with amazing connections. But that's not the case. It was started by a 19 year old Stanford dropout with a fake voice. No, it hasn't. Well, if I use traditional words to describe what we're doing, it's hard because people then associate it with. That 19 year old's name was Elizabeth Holmes, who had a dream of becoming a billionaire and have a status of a successful entrepreneur. She was afraid of needles, so she decided that you don't need a giant needle to get your blood results. You just need a little drop from the tip of your finger and get the results in real time. That idea got to her head while not leaving her home for five days and sleeping only two hours per night, all because she saw the SARS outbreak. Elizabeth convinced his neighbor to invest $1 million in her idea. He got greens from investing in Hotmail. Her family had some connections and a rich history. Using that, Elizabeth managed to gather $6 million by the end of the year. Amazing start, but she struggled to get investments from the medical investors because her idea had flaws. Elizabeth's idea was that from a drop of blood, you would put it in their machine called Edison and via Wi-Fi, the Edison machine would give you results in real time. That's not possible. You need a lot of blood to get accurate results. You can get a diagnosis from a drop of blood. These machines that give you blood results are huge and it's impossible to make them in the size of a coffee machine. And it takes days to get the results. You simply can't get them right now. You can't get the machine smaller because the components interfere with each other because of heat, electricity, and light. So basically, Theranos would have to make a giant breakthrough in blood analysis field. Now, what was Elizabeth's plan to make a giant breakthrough? Well, her plan was to work the workers to death. And if it didn't work 24-7, you would get fired. They would watch them all the time on cameras. When the engineering manager told Elizabeth that the workers are tired, you know what Elizabeth did? She hired another team and put them against each other. The losing team would be fired. Hard-working employees weren't the reason for this massive scam. They all needed to sign contracts of silence. And if they would speak up, they would go against an army of Theranos lawyers. Everybody in the company knew that the product is a scam, including Elizabeth and Sonny Bovani. Sonny was the president of Theranos and Elizabeth's boyfriend, who made over $40 million in that com bubble crash. He wasn't any better than her. They managed to get a board of powerful and influential people from US secretaries, former senators, and CEOs of giant companies. Even their investors were powerful people. The Walton family, the founders of Walmart, invested $150 million. Owner of Wall Street Journal, Rupert Murdoch, invested $120 million. Former Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, invested $100 million. And there is much more of that. How they got such big investment? How is it possible? Those people needed proof that Theranos machines could work to invest millions of dollars in the company. Simple, they faked everything. Elizabeth stood by that the Edison machine could make 250 tests. In reality, it could make only 12. And those were inaccurate. See, if you would run the same test twice on the machine, it will get you different results. So they used third-party machines to do the testing and only legitimate proof was a document from John Hopkins Medical School. The document was two pages long and contained a meeting where Theranos showed the medical school's representative data results. No actual test Testing was done on the machines. Theranos would put Pfizer logo on the documents to make it more legit. This way of business managed Theranos to get a deal with Safeway and Walgreens. The plan was to have a space for the Edison machine in a part of the stores from Walgreens and Safeway. So we all know that the machine doesn't work. So Theranos would set up storages near Walgreens and Safeway and then transport that blood via FedEx to headquarters. The blood would overheat in FedEx trucks and it would be destroyed. If you still don't know how serious this is, Theranos knew that the machine didn't work and they still tested it on real patients who had serious illnesses. Even one patient had the results that he had cancer and when he went to see a real doctor, 
he told them that he is perfectly healthy. The blood tests determine patients' medication or diagnose conditions that require immediate actions. They run tests on cancer patients. It could be fatal. This was too dangerous to continue. It needed to come to an end. When they moved to Silicon Valley, a member of the sales team found out that the projections weren't honest. Surprise, surprise. He told the board and the board decided to fire Elizabeth. Hooray, finally. But she convinced them not to. The board consisted of high-profile individuals. How can they let a scam happen? I mean, if the world find out that it was a scam, it will ruin their reputation. Well, they all were under Elizabeth's spell. She had some real voodoo magic there. Proof of that is Tyler Schultz. He worked in Terranos and found out it was a scam. Who would have thought? He told his grandpa, George Schultz, who is a former US secretary and member of the board. You know what he did? He disregarded everything. The board gave her full power. Elizabeth had everything. She was on the cover of Forbes, youngest self-made billionaire with a company worth of $9 billion that is going to change the world. Constant media appearances. Obama made her US ambassador of entrepreneurship. She was on the board of Harvard Medical School. Private jets, five-star hotel. She thought there was no end, but that's what change soon. The beginning of the end was a guy named Richard Fuiz. He went to court with Terranos for a patent. He created a patent for a method transmitting information from blood testing machines to doctors. He called privately Terranos killer. All that because he was an old family friend and was mad that Elizabeth didn't ask him for advice. Richard formed a group of skeptics of Terranos and managed to leak some information about the company to a journalist John Carey wrote of Wall Street Journal. John needed more proof, so he got in contact with Tyler Schultz, ex-lab director Adam Rosendorf, Erica Chung, and tons of anonymous ex-employees who spilled everything. Terranos threatened them with a lawsuit, but it was too late. The damage was done. Elizabeth even went to Rupert Murdoch, the owner of Wall Street Journal, to destroy the story, but he didn't want to. So the article was published. The whole world saw that Terranos is a scam. Elizabeth tried to convince the world otherwise with her media appearances. After the article, FDA, US Food and Drug Administration, came for a surprise visit to Terranos. Guess what they found? Criminal investigation stock. Investors sued Terranos one by one. Partner fund for 100 million. Walgreens for 140 million. Elizabeth also needed to pay. 4.5 million to Arizona State, tons of patients sued Taranos. In the court, everything was revealed. Papers, emails, etc. It was revealed that Taranos was in pure catastrophe. Net losses of 16 million in 2010, 27 million in 2011, 57 million in 2012, 92 million in 2013. Oh, and they burned $2 million per week in 2013. In 2018, Taranos finally closed the door. Trial was canceled twice, one time because of COVID and the second time because Elizabeth was pregnant. She acted like nothing happened. She lived a normal life with her new boyfriend. In November of 2022, Elizabeth got a sentence of 11 years in jail. But the sentence was delayed because she got pregnant again. Now she goes by the name of Liz Holmes and wants you to forget about the fake voice and turtleneck. Oh, and Elizabeth's ex-boyfriend Sonny Bomani got 13 years behind the bars. They were charged for fraud and wire fraud. Let's hope that a scam like this never I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe and tell me in the comments what do you think about Terranos and what do you think would happen if John Carreyrou didn't write the article. Silicon Valley is full of scams. If you want me to cover more scams similar to this, just tell me. If you enjoyed this video, I suggest you watch this video about Disney. We cover the giant's entertainment company's recent mistakes and how it is failing. I promise you it's interesting. Check it out. See you there. Bye.